In the previous two videos, we have studied rectangular waveguide transverse electric mode. Now, we are going to study transverse magnetic mode in rectangular waveguide. In transverse magnetic mode, HZ equals 0. So, the longitudinal component available in transverse magnetic mode is EZ. This transverse magnetic mode or this longitudinal component EZ can be represented as the mode equation small ez as a function of x and y multiplied by the propagation constant e to the power minus g beta z. The Helmholtz wave equation in this case could be partial squared by partial x squared plus partial squared by partial y squared plus kc squared ez equal 0, where kc squared is k squared minus beta squared. By using separation of variables, we can represent Ez as a function x of x multiplied by function y of y. And in this case, this wave equation will be represented as two ordinary differential equations, one of x and one of y. By solving these two ordinary uh, differential equations, we can obtain the function capital X and function capital Y. Actually, these are the same steps as in the case of transverse electric mode. Then, by multiplying capital X by capital Y, we obtain the mode function Ez as a function of X and Y as A cosine Kx multiplied by X plus B sine Kx multiplied by X. This is multiplied by C cosine Ky multiplied by Y plus D sine Ky multiplied by Y. Fortunately, in the present case for transverse magnetic mode, the boundary condition can be applied directly on EZ, on the longitudinal component. In this case, the tangential electric field on the walls of the birth electric conductor sheets would be zero. So Ez at x equals zero, which correspond to the left plane, would be zero. And Ez at x equal a, which correspond to the right plane, would be zero. On the other hand, Ex at y equal zero, which correspond to the bottom plane, would be zero. And Ez at y equal b would be 0, which corresponds to the upper plane. In all cases, the electric field Ez is tangential on these four blades. By applying in these boundary conditions, at the beginning, by applying at x equal 0, at x equal 0, this sign would be 0, so this would be cosine. This means that the value of a would be 0. Similarly, if I apply at y equal 0, this sign would be 0, so this would be c, cosine 0 would be 1, so the value of c would be 0. So the value of a would be 0 and the value of c would be 0, means that the electric field Ez as a function of x or y would be proportional to sine kxx, sine ky1. Uh, now, this A equals 0 and C equals 0. Now, by applying the boundary condition at Y equal A, the electric field would be 0. So, in this case, would be sine KYA, uh, sorry, at X equal 0, at X equal, uh, sorry, at X equal A at x equals a. So in this case sine kx a would be 0. This means that kx would be m by over a where m equal 1, 2, 3 and 4 and it couldn't be 0 and we will see why it would not be 0. Mathematically it would be 0 but physically it would not be 0. In a similar way when y equal b 
the field would be zero. So in this case, sign k y b it would be zero. So in this case, k y it would be n by over b, where n equals one, two, three, and also n here does not equal zero. All right. So in this case, the electric field we have a and c are zero. B and D multiplied by each other would be correspond to D M N sine K X X K X M Y over A X sine K Y Y K Y N by over B Y. Okay. It can be noted here if N or M are zero, then the corresponding sign would be zero. This means that the electric field is would be zero, and in this case, there is no uh, longitudinal electric field component. There is no T M mode at all. Okay. That's why M and N cannot be zero. They start from the value of N of of one. This means that the lowest cutoff mode in this case would correspond to the mode one one. In transverse magnetic mode, we don't have one zero. All right. Now, by knowing uh, the longitudinal electric field component, we can obtain the transverse field component as follows: E x would be minus j beta over k c square partial e z by partial x. So, partial e z by partial x would be m by over a cosine m by x over a and sine it would be the same so in this case it would be minus g beta m by over a kc squared bm cosine m by x over a sine n by y over b multiplied by the propagation function in z direction e to the power minus g beta z e y would be minus j beta over kc squared partial ez by partial y in this case the derivative with respect to y correspond to n by uh, n by over b cosine n by y over b so in this case e y would be minus j beta n by over b kc squared sine m by x over a Cosine n by y b by uh, n n by y over b multiplied by e to the power minus j because h x it would be j omega epsilon over k c squared partial e z by partial y so it would be the same function as e y but here the multiplication factor it would be j omega epsilon over k c squared instead of minus j uh, beta over k c squared. So j omega epsilon over k c squared n y over b b m n sine m by x over a cosine n by y over b e to the power minus g beta z. H y it would be minus j omega epsilon over k c squared partial e z by partial x. This would be the same as e x but the multiplication factor would be minus g omega epsilon over k c squared instead of minus j beta over k c squared. So in this case, h y would be minus g omega epsilon m by over a k c squared b m n cosine m by x over a sine n by y over b multiplied by e to the power minus g beta z. The wave parameters for TM modes in rectangular waveguide. These are the field components inside transverse magnetic modes in rectangular waveguide. From these uh, field components, we can obtain beta, the propagation constant, equals uh, square root of k squared minus kc squared. And kc squared in this case would be m by over b squared plus n by over b squared. So the propagation constant beta equals square root of k squared minus m by over a squared minus n by over b squared. 
and as we mentioned the lowest mode in transverse magnetic mode is 1 1 mode so the lowest cutoff frequency for transverse magnetic modes is f cutoff 1 1 which is 1 over 2 by square root mu epsilon square root by over a where m is unity square plus by over b squared where n is unity the wave impedance for the transverse magnetic mode is ex over hy or minus ey over hx ex over hy would be beta over omega epsilon omega epsilon it can be replaced by k over eta so can be represented beta eta over k where beta is the propagation constant inside the transverse magnetic mode eta is the intrinsic impedance of the medium inside uh, the rectangular waveguide and k is the propagation wave number of the medium inside the rectangular waveguide it can be noted that there is no transverse magnetic 0 0 0 1 or 1 0 we start from 1 1 node okay here is uh, the field distribution for the transverse magnetic mode here is the uh, field distribution for the transverse magnetic mode 1 1 uh, in this case if we return back to the field distribution we have the electric field is proportional to cosine by x over a sine by y over a so the electric field ex the electric field ex uh, it would be maximum uh, at x equal 0 at x equal 0 and x equal a and it would be maximum at y equal b over 2 so it would be concentrated uh, at x equal 0 and x equal a x equal 0 here x here is the x direction x, x equal 0 and x equal a we have the electric field in x direction is concentrated yeah here is the electric field ex is concentrated at x equal 0 and x equal a we have the electric field in x direction and concentrated at y equal b over 2 so this means that at this point the electric field is mainly in x direction okay on the other hand the electric field ey is concentrated at y equal 0 and y equal b and concentrated at x equal a over 2 because the sign will be concentrated at the middle so in this case at y equal 0 and y equal b and x equal a over 2 at the center we have the electric field is concentrated in y direction one positive and one negative because here the cosine cosine 0 is uh, 1 and cosine by is minus 1 so uh, if we are talking about the two direction 0 at y equals 0 and y equal a uh, sorry y equals 0 and y equal b we have two opposite directions okay so in this case we have a peak in x direction and we have a peak in y direction so we are talking about what b in x and b in y we are talking about 1 1 if we are talking about 2 1 mode so in this case we will have two peaks in x direction two peaks in x direction while we have one peak in y direction in this case we have two different loops of uh, the electric and magnetic fields it can be noted here that the electric field is coming from the center and concentrated towards the walls this means that 
to excite it's a transverse magnetic mode would be required to use uh, a probe uh, in the direction or in the longitudinal direction in the z direction if you have a probe in the longitudinal direction we can excite the transverse magnetic mode if we are planning to excite transverse magnetic to one mode we have or we should use two different probes and these two probes should be had a phase shift uh, 180 degrees such that if this is positive this should be negative such that there is electric field from the first probe to the second probe and here the field in positive and here is a field in the negative direction okay so these are the field distribution for tm11 mode and tm20 mode okay